Well, you can get ready for a food fight, not on the protests here, but on food and the rocketing cost of food and Kamala Harris's plan uh, to freeze prices or get the government moving in that direction. Uh, there are a lot of people that, to blame for what's happening with inflation, not the least of which are those that occupy the White House. Uh, but to be fair, we were coming out of COVID with the economy was stopped, so activity and prices were due to rise. But it did seem a little rich to many to hear Kamala Harris saying, uh, this isn't on us. This is on a lot of the food companies and the food industry. They're gouging you. My next guest doesn't quite buy that. Andrew Grohl is a noted chef and restaurant owner. So, Andrew, this idea that uh, people are getting gouged, uh, you know, whether it comes to, to restaurants or grocery stores or food companies, that doesn't add up to you. Why not? Well, it doesn't add up because I've seen the numbers across large businesses, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and it's the, you know, the margins are not there. I mean, most of the time right now in restaurants, restaurants are actually breaking even at best. But let's talk about the large food corporations. I mean, 1% to 3% on the margins. We all have heard that number over the past couple of days. Right. So I want to understand where the gouging is. And what I, what I find pretty funny is, is that I actually went and watched an interview where somebody who was in support of this bill, a senator, specifically on MSNBC was talking about this, and the interviewer said to him, well, how do you know if they're price gouging? And he said, well, we won't know, but what we want is we want that massive amount of unilateral power to the FTC where they can go into these businesses and investigate and open their books and be aggressive and find out if they are price gouging. So this is really about control, and that's the scary aspect of this, especially for a small business owner myself. You know, Andrew, you hear the administration often use uh, this shrinkflation as, a, as proof that companies are trying to gouge you. You could also flip that around the other way, that if, if they're offering, you know, uh, lower price packages with less items in them, if they're trying to deal with that inflation and not sticker shock their, their, their consumers. But what do you make of that argument? Uh, there's shrink. Uh, inflation going on, which means there's gouging going on. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I think that that's just more semantic, shrinkflation, greedflation, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act, right? All of these things sound great and fancy on paper, but they don't necessarily add up. I mean, I can go through a bag of potato chips in about two seconds, so I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't counted the <laughs> chips. It's probably something I should get checked right. out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're right. You've got various options. I mean, you can obviously decrease portion size, you can decrease quality, or you can increase your prices, or you can do some common combination of all three. But at the end of the day, what we got to remember here is, is that every single time the government gets involved in business, and over the past 15 years, I've opened probably 40 businesses in 15 different states, and it's one absolute is, is that when they get involved in trying to fix a problem that many of the times they create, other problems either arise, it's like a game of economic whack-a-mole, or they make the original problem worse. It's almost as if they don't trust the consumers themselves to have the agency to make the right decisions. You know, every business, large and small, they want to be able to serve the best product at the lowest possible price to cut out their competitor. And consumers are smart. They're not going to pay $100 for a hamburger. So you're always going to get that competition right. where people are kind of fighting in in order to be able to serve the best product at the best price. So why does the government know better than the consumer when, if you think about it, none of the people making these suggestions have run their own business? It makes me wonder if they've even been consumers. You know, Andrew, uh, you're a pretty good chef and a pretty smart restaurant owner. So how do you deal with the rising cost of pretty much everything you make? Uh, it's a great question. You got to be smart, right? So number one is you you find the right people, you hire for efficiency and operations, right? And you're going to have to increase your prices and you have to increase them across the board. But you hope that volume makes up for uh, any of the loss, mm. right? So if you go from 5% margins to now 2%, but my volume doubles by way of those increased prices and I'm serving the right product and I get more people in. And you, you have to be cognizant also of different dining times during the day, promotions, placement, marketing, all of those things that it takes to run a business. But it's a nuanced world. And once again, I go back to saying this. Who's run the business here? Have any of these government officials run businesses successfully? Most of the time, it's no. That's very interesting. Um, so how are you doing it, though? Andrew Grill, uh, chef, restaurant owner extraordinaire. Uh, I think he's in a better position to judge what's happening in his industry than 
than the United States government. But again, uh, from Kamala Harris, we have gotten this proposal to, to freeze food prices, lots of other prices, and the government doing that. Now, keep in mind, this is the same government where we've seen inflation run rampant in its books. So now it's trying to police ours. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.